In this video I'm getting a Sargent DC-DC charger fitted together with a Power Queen LifePo 4 or LFP battery for short and I'll show you how they're fitted by Tony at Todd's Motorhomes and discuss how an LFP battery can benefit you and why you may need a DC-DC charger. Power Queen battery and the Sargent DC-DC have been provided for the purpose of review but I'm not being paid or told what to say. Now, all the links will be in the description below and at the time of this video the DCX3012 is not currently on Sargent's website but I'll leave contact details uh, so you can ask them. Also note that uh, Swift have also said that they won't provide a retrofit kit for Swift motorhomes. I'd like to thank Todd's and especially Tony for doing the fitting of this uh, DC DC converter. So let's get on with it. Right, here we are, Todd's. Right, the area we're going to be working on is mainly under here where the power supply unit is. I've removed all the carpets just to make it a bit easier, all in the bedroom. I'll go and get checked in. We've got the van in the workshop. Tony's on the case. <laughs> Bent the seat off and just taken that panel out. That's for the, to get to the wiring. But, uh, also taken out the uh, panel over there. Yeah, so that's the wire and exposed there. The little uh, thing on its own is the reversing sensor. So we need to connect into here somehow. And the problem is going to have is getting the wire in through that little gap there somehow. Could cut those. Cut those and, and, and spice then, them back. Yeah. Mm, that'd be easier, wouldn't it, rather than taking all the pins off. And that in, drilling that in. Yeah. I might be tempted to do that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you've got to get through there. And then if he cuts the wire, you won't need to drill any holes or anything there, would you? No. 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 Okay. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Yeah. All right. It's going to be, I know I don't have to bend any of that back. Yeah. Okay. John will be in there anyway. Yeah. So. Do you want a grabber to go and grab the cable? It's a very useful piece of kit, that is. Oh, look at that. I must get one of them. <laughs> uh, it saves shoving all those plugs through a tiny little hole and they're not going to go through. Splicing the cables together. A chunky crimper that is, isn't it? heat shrink on that as well. <laughs> and just taped up for good measure. Just feeding the cable into the uh, bit under the sofa, there, um, under the power supply there. Okay. 
messing about trying to get the cable through there. They've got some dip switches here that tell it what sort of battery you use and I notice it's got a LifePo 4 uh, option there which is what we've got uh, or AGM lead acid gel or something else. I don't know what the something else is but... <laughs> flooded probably. Yeah. Just standard flooded maybe. All oh, right. There we go. So that's the DC-DC or the batteries to battery whichever one you want to call it. So I'm going to find somewhere to put it now. Yeah, that's it. And I'll put it on the side of the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, you need a different connector then. That's what they give me that for. So that oh, way, right. Okay. And then terminate that into that clip. All oh, right. Which would. Yeah, that's what they want me to do. Yeah. So what are these ones here then? What are these ones? So this is your this is from the vehicle battery. All right. So um, this is where the vehicle battery went into okay. the PSU. Okay. So now it's it's doing a loop. Again, you just join them together there. Panels just come back to us. There they are. On, just need to put that panel back in there. <laughs> just pinning the cables, you just want to keep it away from the mains cable, don't you? So. Yeah. yeah, it's got the panel back. Just got to put this back now and put a bit of sleeve in on that where the cables come through there. I'm always worried about a bit of chafing against the metal there. Right. Yeah, so they sent some instructions how to update the firmware and that's on the panel here. And it should just slide up and off. Some clips or something that hold yeah. it in position. There we go. And there's a slot on the back for the SD card. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
turn the power supply back on. And it goes through a process of loading the firmware, which was the same we saw on the PSU, but obviously it's done here now. A little bit of word wording out there that says end. <laughs> Take the SD card out, power it back on. Beep, beep. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Just the uh, yeah, tank yeah. alerts, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Just, it's just two screws holding that on. Let's switch a light on in here as well. Where is it there? Oh, because there's no point in the thing. Off. That's real trouble getting that out. Because <laughs> it's quite a tight fit. Yeah, so I put the Power Queen just at the front there. Right, so we just need to swap the, and I need to, leave the other one in and then just swap the cables over. You want to take the other one out? You can take the other one out, yeah. yeah. If that's alright, you don't yeah, mind. Yeah. I just wrapped it up so I wasn't going to get trapped. I, wonder, I might see if I can get another one of those. Right, yeah. You'll pain these because they, they're in there and they've got a, like a, a board above it. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to take the separator panel out. You've got to take those things out there, those wooden separators, to get at it. contact them again see if they want to send me another one yeah. they do one with a with a sensor on it to you know, monitor the charge and oh yeah does this have bluetooth on no it's no it's just the basic one right yeah so that's at 13. oh okay. so, what, sorry that's still at 13 points so yeah that's it's amazing isn't it i yeah. mean we'll not charge that since we sold the contiki so. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that's great that's yeah great. Right, a couple of changes need to make, so hold that, go into the settings menu, and on power, change the leisure battery to lithium, turn the split charger off, because we're not using the split charger anymore, and the smart charger's on smart. But there's also, under accessories, is the CAN bus settings, DC-DC CAN bus fitted. And what all of that means is, now we've got an extra screen here and if I press this button here and we've got the vehicle battery uh, we've got the vehicle running we've now got an extra screen that tells us what's going on uh, with the vehicle so we can see the leisure battery is now uh, being charged and the vehicle battery is supplying to the DC-DC you can also see what uh, the vehicle battery is putting out, 16.6 amps, 11.8, 17. yeah, and the top is amps and the bottom is volts. 
So it's charging the leisure battery at 14 volts now. They've also sent me a new mug as well. <laughs> Sergeant. And an air freshener apparently as well. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. So I hope you're finding this video useful. And if you are, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing as it's free. And I'll be showing all the upgrades I'd be making to this motorhome and going through some of the features of our new Swift Contiki 784. Now, a lot of you will know the benefits of lithium or LFP batteries, but it's worth recapping some of those, uh, those benefits. This Power Queen battery is considerably lighter than the battery it replaces. It's only 11.45 kilograms in new money. It can discharge twice as much energy as a comparable lead acid battery and its weight is reduced by two thirds. It has a built in 100 amp battery management system at BMS that prevents overcharging, over discharging, over temperature, over current and short circuit. It can also be charged in 50% of the time of a conventional lead acid battery. Now it has a life cycle of up to 4,000 cycles uh, where it will still retain 80% of its capacity or 15,000 cycles up to 60% of its capacity. The Sargent DXC30-12 charger is similar to a multi-stage mains battery charger used when you plug into the mains. However, instead of a 240 volt AC input, it requires a 12 volt DC input, such as the alternator of a vehicle. Now the charger is activated as soon as the engine starts and detects when the engine is running. It charges at up to 30 amps, taking the variable output from the alternator and charging the leisure battery according to the correct type of battery. So the output to the leisure battery is now independent of the input voltage from the alternator. It works better than the standard fitted voltage relay sensor or the split charge relay, especially with a smart alternator, which can simply disconnect when it reaches the lower voltage threshold. And that can happen a lot on a long journey. That could potentially leave your leisure battery not fully charged. Now the DXC30-12 provides protection from overcharging from the smart alternator. It also provides protection for the vehicle battery from discharging too far. And the other benefit about this DC-DC charger is it's CAN bus enabled. And that means it can report back its status to the SWIFT command panel and give us some useful information about the state of charge. Now I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And like I say, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below and uh, I'll look at, I'll read all the comments and I'll answer them if I can, or I'll pass the question on to Sergeant. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon. Bye then.